but don't let anyone over prepare you means that you need to be so prepared mm -hmm. that you are confident about one thing mm -hmm. not that you're gonna win but that you're extremely prepared and you're probably the most prepared person in the competition mm -hmm. yeah because preparation equals confidence mm -hmm. and when I'm so happy you you're back. I'm back finally. I'm so happy reunited. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, because it's the first time actually that I interview a guest twice on the Break Time with Patty show. Feels so special. You are. So special. <laughs> you have no idea how much I love you. You're gonna find out what it's all about. <laughs> yes, you'll you'll get the reference very soon. Yes. Let me introduce my friend Mariam Gani to you. Number one. Maria is a legally blind motivational speaker and founder. Number two, she is also a mindset coach. And finally, number three, she is the third best speaker in the world. <laughs> That's right. She won the title of the third best speaker in the world out of 35,000 contestants or something. Yes. I know what you're thinking. Wait, yeah, that. I almost rolled my eyes. <laughs> hey, it's coming, it's coming. There's so much more about her. So if you want to know more, going back to when she was a little girl, yeah. with all really a lot of details, <laughs> check out her our first hilarious interview right here or watch the link in the description below. However, this is not why we're here today. We just went through um, a near-death experience. <laughs> I love how she says it. You'll understand why in a bit. <laughs> and near this is in the Bahamas. Yeah. This last August 2023. And we wanted to have a conversation about it with you. Mm. And why do you want to hear this conversation? Because after we will have discussed the months leading up to her making it to the podium, Mariam will be sharing all of the things she wished she knew before she entered the contest and became the third best speaker in the world. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? I am. I'm very ready. <laughs> All right. I've talked enough. Let's <laughs> jump right in. Maria, why did you decide to compete this year? Yes. So the real reason why I wanted to compete or I decided to compete is because I was encouraged by my mentor, Scott McLaughlin. And how it all started is it was right uh, around COVID. It was uh, 2021, actually. And I was looking for a way to join Toastmasters. I had no idea how to join. I said, how does someone join a club like that? You know, a, a club, how do I do it? Do I call? I found <clears throat> the page, the Toastmasters page on Facebook. And I posted, hi, how does one join a club? And a couple of minutes later, I had Scott who answered me. And he happened to be uh, the president of the club at the time and the founder of Tunney's Toastmasters. So he reached out to me. And he said, hey, you know, you can come try it out and see if you like it. And I did the same week. And the same week he explained to me, he said, you know, when, when you join Toastmasters, you can get a mentor and I can be your mentor. And I think you should start speaking right away because I'd already been speaking before. And I just really wanted to take it to a whole new level, be with a like-minded community. So I, we did that. And within the same month, he said, hey, by the way, you know, Miriam, there's a contest for speaking. And I said, there's this public speaking contest. How does that work? Is it the, the person who says the most words in a minute, you know, wins? And he said, no, no, you're going to see. It's really fun. You're going to love it. It's a great way to challenge yourself. I really think you have something. I think you have the potential. And he said, you know what? I even think you can get to the world stage. I said, the world stage? You know, and we just met a couple of weeks back, but he heard my icebreaker speech. He said, you can't get through um, this year. It was 2021 and it was this, the same month of the contest. He said, you can't go past it because you don't have your two levels. But I would say, take a shot at the contest. It's going to be unofficial for you because you don't qualify, mm -hmm. but do it just for fun. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I did it. And I won first place in the club. Oh. Yeah. And I was, to me, it was a huge accomplishment. Mm -hmm. I thought, what? With all these amazing speakers, these people who've been there, who've done that, they know what they're talking about. I had no idea what I was doing. And so when I delivered that speech, 
Scott said, well, you won first place, but you can't go anywhere with that. <laughs> Let's try next year and actually get you officially into the contest. And so, and he had that goal for me. He had a vision for me. Um, he really believed in me. And I thought, how can someone believe in me so much? Mm -hmm. It was such a gift. It was so much more that I, I did not expect to receive. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, if someone believes that I can make it there, then maybe I should start believing it. Mm -hmm. And Scott really inspired me and said, you know what? I, I have a bunch of resources for you. He started sharing all of them. He's a vault. Yes. Scott, Scott has yes. a vault of information. Mm -hmm. And he was sending me all these resources. I, I registered with Stage Time University. So it was an online university for, for, for public speaking. I got into all these groups. I, I got all kinds of resources and he mm -hmm. helped me, you know, up my skills. Mm -hmm. But that was how it all started. It really started because I was encouraged by someone to take a chance, to take a risk. And it was, for me, it was a small chance because it was just, I didn't see the world stage. I saw just the just one contest, just the mm -hmm. club. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what I would I would ever go past it. Mm -hmm. That's how it started. Wow. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me too. Like I said it a few months before you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Scott reached out to me very quickly, actually. It, it was, he's an amazing man. Actually, his interview is right here. Yeah. <laughs> if you'd like to watch it. But he was being realistic. He said, you know what? This is what you need to work on, in my opinion. This is what I've seen. This is what I've seen so far. And he said, I think you can really make it through area and division. Mm. He said, but the big, the really big guys come at the district. Mm -hmm. So he said, that's where you need to really bring it up. M not just one level, but many notches up. And he said, that's where the real work starts. Mm. And I didn't understand. I mean, I understood what he was telling me, but I had no idea what to expect. Mm -hmm. And he told me, there's so many people who want to make it to district. You know, Mariam, even if you stop right there, whatever the result is, you making it to the district is a huge deal. And I didn't believe him. You know, I said, Scott, really, come on. What is this district? You know, <laughs> what is, you know, because at, at that point, don't forget, I was doing everything online, right? It was all virtual. Yeah. The, the, the club, mm. the area, the division was all virtual. So it didn't become real until... I stepped in person mm -hmm. to the convention. I got into the hotel with all these people. It was a big event. Mm -hmm. Then I visited the room for sound check and I thought, okay, this is this is it. This is a big thing. It's a big deal. And I remember that remember that the night before I even I had tears in my eyes. I was getting emotional. I got I got that's when the nerves started mm -hmm. to kick in and I started doubting and I thought, can I really make it through that? I'm scared. I shared with, with Patty the night before. I said, Patty, I'm scared. And I was crying. Remember? Yes, I remember. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I sure remember. And I was, I I wasn't gonna back away, but I was I was scared because right before Scott said, Oh, by the way, you know what? The district, district 61, there's this one really good speaker. He's a bombastic speaker. Yes. And he said, he makes it through every single year. He wins every year. So I thought, really, you're telling me this now, Scott? <laughs> you know, um, why are you telling me this? He said, no, 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 it's okay. You just do your thing. You focus on you. You do your thing. And that's it. You do your best. And I remember I was first. That was my speaking yes. order. Speaking order for Oh, and my God. I remember, <clears throat> I remember that Rebecca McMillan was doing the, uh, you know, the, the wheel, the electronic wheel. And she said, first speaker, Miriam. And I thought, okay. To me, it was a good thing. It was a good sign because it answered my inner voice that said, if you're going to be number one to speak, then you'll be number one, wow. you know? And uh, when I told people afterwards, they're like, oh, you're number one. Oh, okay. <laughs> do your best, you know? <laughs> Just do everything you can. Give it everything you, yeah. you got. And I'm like, why is everyone panicking over and over? No, I didn't even think they were panicking. Just so why are they making a big deal of me being the first speaker, you know? Is the worst possible spot. That's what I. That's what you told me after, yes. and I'm so happy she told me this afterwards because I would have probably it would have played with my my mental yes. state. But remember, well, Darren, like what I always says, well, if you have to be first, well, make sure you're the best and you're so memorable. You make everybody else look bad. Yeah, remember? he told me that after though. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing yeah. is, what I told you when I, we we talked, I said, you know what, <clears throat> Mariam. God brought you here, and yeah. if He wants you to get through, you're gonna you're gonna get through. It doesn't matter who the you know the, the best speakers are. They were amazing speakers. I was there. It was at Chateau Montebello. It was an amazing mm -hmm. conference. Yeah, and they were outstanding. Yeah, I said, you know what? If you, you know, God can make anything possible. I'm just a little comment here. And Patty, you were here with you were there with me at every moment. 
strengthening my inner conf just not it's not even a, a confidence question at this point it's beyond confidence it's a strong belief in something that hasn't yet happened that doesn't exist that is not concrete because no one knows what the results are going to be but yeah. patty was i would i call her my angel she was there next to me and you were next to me you were reminding me of my purpose my mission and who i am and why i was there mm. and i think that's very important to have and we'll probably discuss that after but my the faith that you need to have at that moment needs to surpass any doubt any speaking skills any experience because let's face it i'm not haven't been speaking for 25 years mm -hmm. you know i had just joined toastmasters about a year and, and, and a couple you know a year and a half before that so I had no idea what would happen. Mm -hmm. And once I made it past the district, and I remember I spoke, I was first, I went, I sat down. And after that, the adrenaline goes down. Everything starts crashing. And mm -hmm. then that's when you feel, that's it. That's it. It's done. You know, after seven, it's just seven minutes mm -hmm. and that's it. It's over. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to the other speakers. I had a tear in my eye. <laughs> I literally did. I one tear, one tear, Maria. More than one tear. <laughs> <laughs> maybe three tears <laughs> but uh, right before I went to speak I, I forgot to mention that there was a lady sitting next to me Nancy Moho mm. and right before I got up to speak she was the only one sitting on the row it was my friend on my right Patty right behind me and you were behind me right uh well, I, I was behind you yeah you were yeah. behind mm -hmm. me and Nancy was sitting on my left I didn't know who Nancy was she said by the way I heard you speaking at I think it was division or area I loved your speech mm -hmm. it made me tear up Mm. I just want to tell you something. Be yourself. Mm. And I thought, oh, I needed to hear that. Thank yeah. you, God. You know, this is what I needed to hear. She made me emotional mm. right before mm -hmm. stepping on stage. And so I used those emotions. Oh. They fueled me. I, I absolutely needed to hear that. That was the most beautiful gift I could have oh. gotten. Well, I'll never forget. That. Yeah, I'll never forget that. Right before, seconds before yeah. I stepped on stage. But I remember right after... I heard the other speakers and I thought, wow, <laughs> those people are good, man. <laughs> I'm really like, who am I? You know, I really thought that was my first question. Mm -hmm. Who am I to be here? Mm -hmm. Who am I to even think I can get on that stage and speak? And all these doubts were, and I think this is a normal thing. Imposter I mean, syndrome. <laughs> that's what she explained to me after. Oh, yeah. you imposter. That's exactly how I felt. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, all these doubts. And I was thinking, wow, each person had something to bring. They all projected their voices. They all had a beautiful voice, a beautiful story. And even my friend sitting on my right said, are you okay? I said, no, I'm not. I would I leave. <laughs> I don't want to be here. You know, this is really tough. And I thought, you know what? I'll just let it be. Mm -hmm. And when the results came in and I made it past the district, you know, you asked me, do you, did you think you were going to make it to the world stage? Did you think it was possible? I still didn't think it was mm. possible. Mm. I was sure that I was walking away with just that trophy and it was going to be done. And I wasn't going to make it past regional. I didn't think whatsoever. Mm. I didn't even start working on a speech. That's how much I believed I wouldn't make it through. You know, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think you have some memory issues. <laughs> because not only that, <laughs> when I spoke to you after... I'm so embarrassed. Patricia, Patty, I just looked at my recording. I can't believe I was on stage. I was horrible. It was horrible. You went on and on and on about how horrible it was. So not only you thought that you would not make it through, mm -hmm. you actually thought that you were lousy and you didn't even understand. Like you thought there was something wrong with the judges. <laughs> yeah, I want to yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. I truly did because yeah. the thing is I was told by many people, you have to watch yourself. You know, I've heard it from actors, you know, when we go on YouTube and all, all these people, they say, you have to look at yourself because that's how you improve. Mm -hmm. I hated looking at myself. And I think mm -hmm. maybe someone can relate. Maybe you can relate. I hated looking at myself and I thought I look terrible. This is such a bad performance. Mm -hmm. I made so many mistakes, mm -hmm. but I was picking at the little things and, oh, my voice sounds so awkward here. And, oh, this is not nice. And. I was crying. Actually, I sent a message to Patty and I said, Patty, I don't even know how I made it. This is, this is not good. You want to just quit speaking. Yeah. I said, what? I should not even be a speaker anymore. I should stop. <sighs> Why did I even make it? Through? <laughs> you know, I always have something to complain about. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Let's talk about the straw for a minute. Yeah. Okay, which was the message that you shared at the district. Yeah. What a message. 
But before I, I, I comment on it, I, it was frankly a masterpiece, in my opinion. <laughs> and I'll be adding the link below uh, of that spe speech so you can take a look yourself. It's really something you want to watch. Can you share with us how you thought of this story and what motivated you, you to share the specific message with the audience? Mm, good question. Scott and I had this, uh, it was so spontaneous. The way every time we talk, he comes up with ideas mm -hmm. and I come up with ideas mm -hmm. and then he refines them. And then it's, uh, it was such a beautiful uh, working relationship that we had that it, it was like, Things were, there was always beautiful ideas bubbling up. And I think that motivated me. And upon him questioning me about my path, he said, you know, Miriam, you have so many good stories. And we had an interview, which had many, yes. quite, plenty of, but I think mm -hmm. it was right. Was it after or before? It was before it, it the was district. Before. It inspired yeah. Scott also to tell me, you know, I like that part. Can you tell me more about it? And Ask him asking me questions mm -hmm. made me come up with uh what it made me it reminded me of a story and I said yeah I do actually mm -hmm. I've always wanted to talk about the straw mm -hmm. because this is a thing when I got diagnosed I was told exactly that your visual field will continue to shrink and narrow down until it reaches the size of a straw hole and <clears throat> if you search it up on Google or on, on um, anywhere online you'll see that they compare retinitis pigmentosa, the condition I have, to seeing through a straw, kind mm -hmm. of like tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. And some people end up with no eyesight whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I thought, and I always had this, this message in me that I wanted to say, you know, even if I were to, to look through a straw, it depends where I choose to look. Mm -hmm. I can be looking at light. I can be looking at darkness. It's my choice to use that tiny little mm. hole that I would have left. It's my choice to, to decide where mm. I'm going to point it. And that is the inspiration. It came from there. Mm. And then I'd often travel uh, and I've, I've traveled many times before and I've had many of these little inspirations where whether I've heard a child say something to their mother, I've had many interactions with uh, stewardess and, and, uh, and, and people who are working on the plane. So, I've had a conversation once uh, going to Vancouver and it inspired me mm -hmm. because that lady told me something positive. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I can maybe bring in my straw idea mm -hmm. and use what she said mm -hmm. and put it all together. Mm -hmm. And upon writing my, my speech, I was trying to change some details to make it more interesting. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, why don't, why don't I say, because people are going to think, okay, well, how did she travel? If she, you know, how is she on a plane? Mm -hmm. So I thought, what if I do it on a train? And I saw a, a tree and I wanted to give a description of the tree. And I say a man next to me <laughs> with a white beard and then <laughs> give a description because I was looking into all these, you know, all these storytelling skills and secrets. And you need to give detail and you need to paint a picture and you need to make everything look so good and then scott is like Miriam, have you ever thought of just telling the story <laughs> have you ever i can so see him saying this you yes know, it's cool mm -hmm. and he said <clears throat> a stewardess and a flight attendant i he said you know we don't want to stereotype but it is a very short and effective way mm -hmm. to paint a picture in one word mm -hmm. or two words and then I came back to the original story. I added in my original idea of the straw and we put pieces and bits and pieces together and it started forming into a very nice mm. uh, story and speech. Yeah. yeah, and I used the straw to metaphorically explain that even if you have that tiny little hole, whether it's a physical uh, tunnel vision, or whether it's a metaphorical amount of hope and light that you have left, still pointed where there is light mm. and hope and mm. life. And that was the, the goal. And it's still getting to me. Yes. It still gets to me. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I don't know how many tears I that dropped from that speech. Not just me. Re I asked a bunch of people, Rebecca, I can't be. Um, mm. Anyhow. Yeah. Yes. It touched me too a yes. lot. I mean, after saying it and writing it 60 times, not 60 times, 160 60 yes. times. I, I wasn't getting me as emotional, but I remember uh, maybe the night before when I was reciting it and I was thinking where I was going to tell it, it brought me back to my emotions. Mm -hmm. And it's a message that's very close to my mm -hmm. heart. Yeah. Yes, that was beautiful. So please do go watch it. So that brings us to my next question. <laughs> 
Mariam, Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> I know what she's going to talk about now. <laughs> At what point did you start working on your second speech? Oh, no. You have no idea. <laughs> Tell us how okay. you came up with it. <laughs> well, Mark Brown asked me that question because uh, uh, we were having a panel discussion after the, the world championship. And he asked me a similar question. I thought, why? Why do you? But you know what? This is very important because I heard so many things before. Maryam, there are people who have been working on their speeches for two years and they believe that it takes two years and it's not wrong. I think it's actually the right thing to do, you know? But at that point, I didn't think I was going to make it through either levels. I did want to try out and get to the world stage, but I was focused solely on one speech. I was putting all my focus to get just one step forward. I were, and, and Scott told me, Miriam, one contest at a time. Let's mm -hmm. take this one speed, one step at a time. And so I didn't even think three, four, five steps ahead like you're supposed to. So I had a vision to just quickly, because I remember Scott prompted me, oh, you should think of your second speech, you know, because you do have a chance of making it through district. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. So I did write something. And I made uh, a little, you know, bullet points. I put it in my notes file on the side. I called it, I knew that the, 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 the title came to me so naturally. And I knew I would call it, you have no idea. Because my father would repeat to me that sentence, you have no idea how much I love you, you know? And he would tell me that since I was a kid in Arabic. So I thought, I'm going to call it that. And I, I put a couple of bullet points, started to talk a little bit about his funny character, his loving character, very briefly. And I left it there. And when I went past the district, I needed to, some time to come back down from the clouds. And I didn't work on a speech right after. Do not do that. <laughs> do not do that. And everyone said, you have to act as though you're moving forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's if I move forward, you know, and come to June 26, I get a call. I'm pretty sure it was June 26. I get a call from Amy Campbell. She was a district uh, director, right? Mm -hmm. At the time. Mm -hmm. And I was at the hospital with my father and she called me and I get a call. I said, who is this Amy Campbell? You know, I answered it and she said, hey, Miriam, have you checked your emails today? And I thought, I said, no, I'm so sorry. I didn't have time. You know, I'm at the hospital with my father. Is everything okay? She said, yeah, everything is okay. Yeah. She said, I like, I like to read you an email. Do you mind? And I said, absolutely not. Please go ahead. You know? And she read me the email. She said, we're happy to announce that your member from district 61 is making it through the semi to the semifinals. And I, I was actually crying at the hospital and I told my dad and my dad, of course, he said, no, don't go, you know, <laughs> stay here. You know, it was so funny, but he was, he was happy after mm -hmm. he was proud. But I remember um, that moment very well. And that's when I started thinking of writing a speech. <laughs> so I went back to the, you have no idea. I dug, I started going um, to consult coaches left and right and people and friends. And I remember asking my my best friend, I asked you, I asked Scott. And then at some point I was taking Scott in a different direction, not even just every day, every hour he would yeah. call me. So where are we at now? <laughs> I don't know, Scott. I think we're going to talk about a story when I was five years old. <laughs> and he said, Mariam, wasn't your story your dad? I said, yeah, it is. But I don't know. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Someone told me this. And then I'm thinking that. And so I started doubting myself. So I completely, I remember doing uh, a story dig on paper, well, on paper, I typed it and um, I was recommended by many people to do that, including you. Mm -hmm. And so that was a great idea. So I started writing all the stories that I had that could be possibly used. And one coach and some people recommended, oh, go with that. It's beautiful. And I, well, I loved it. I loved that story. It was supposed to be called uh, The Edge. Yeah. Uh, or the cliff or the edge. I, I, I hadn't come the up with the, the title. Edge. It yeah. was the edge. Yeah, it was the edge. The last one was the edge. But that, I was working on it and working on it and working and refining it. But as I was working on it, there was some something mm. in me that was just not feeling it. I wasn't feeling it. There was something not right. You know when something's yes. just not sitting with mm -hmm. you? 
And I, I remember having so much anxiety. I would wake up in the middle of the night and think, is this what I'm going to do? I, do I see myself telling the world this message now, this year? No, there's something not right. And then I would get advice from coaches and very qualified people, very good advice too. No, Mariam, this is a good world speech. It's going to work. This is great. It's a great story. And although I didn't communicate with them my sincere doubts, I still went with it because I wanted a good story. I wanted a winning story. Mm -hmm. At that point, my focus had completely changed. Mm -hmm. It was no longer share a message that comes from your heart. It's write a good story that could win. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started stumbling and I started doubting. And then one day I woke up. I think I had left my laptop next to me on my bed, left it open with a pile of napkins because I had cried that evening. And I thought, I don't know where I'm going to go with this. I don't even think I'm going to go anymore. I'm dreading this. And I woke up, it was two, three, four, it was between two and four in the morning after sleeping maybe 20 minutes. And I thought, let me just try rewriting my dad's story. Mm. Let me just scrap this, this, you know, the, this, the edge, pretend like it had no existence and just Pretend that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about my father's speech. And I wrote it and ideas were flowing. And I call that divine inspiration. Mm -hmm. It really was. I don't know where it came from. I think it was the whole process, of, of course. And I started writing. And the first sentence is, have you ever felt like your parents and you? I was just tentatively writing it. Mm -hmm. Oh, my father speaks Arabic. I speak. I'm a millennial. You know what? I speak millennial. Mm -hmm. And I thought... How can I depict the differences between my father and I? And that's when the speech came together. And that date was August 2nd, between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then I contacted Alexandre Matt and I said, help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I went back to Scott and said, Scott, I decided I'm going back to my dad's speech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he never lost hope. He never became impatient. He, he never judged. He said, okay, you want to go there? Let's go there. We're only two weeks before the contest. Oh my God. Oh, we could still do it. Yeah. Yes. Just a, a little parenthesis there, parenthesis. Before you even went to Alexandre, that morning, you told me the idea of that, that thing. And I, I was, I cried five different times. You were not even giving a speech. No. You were just sharing your idea and it yeah. was so powerful. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> crying as if somebody died. So, and then we knew like, this, this is a, this, this is, is it. Yes, this is it. Yeah. And it felt yeah. so right for you because you were really struggling with the edge. Yes. You were so, anyway. I was, I wasn't sitting right with me. And when it's true, I remember when I was mm -hmm. telling you, Patty, I wanted to cry. I felt mm -hmm. emotional. Mm -hmm. I felt inspired. And I thought that's how I felt with the straw. If I don't feel this way, when I write a speech, I don't care how good the mm -hmm. words are. I cannot deliver mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had two weeks left, although I didn't want to look at the calendar. I said, you know what? I'm going to take it one hour at a time. It is possible. And I remember uh, Scott telling me, Miriam, you know, some people can write a speech in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible. Mm -hmm. If the idea flows, it's going to flow. Mm -hmm. And I took that little light of hope, the little light at the end of the straw, and I applied it and Thankfully, it worked yes, out. It did. It worked out. It did. Yeah. Oh, okay. At this point, we're in the Bahamas. It's hot. We're in a gorgeous resort. Mm. Okay. Can you please share what happened? Maybe, actually, can we even backtrack? Just a few days leading up to uh, you delivering the straw. Mm. You know, and if I feel like you left anything out, I will be stepping in. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know she's not. There's no mercy with Patty. <laughs> Okay. It's with a lot of love. It's I know. Love. Mm -hmm. I need, you know what? I want to be as authentic and as transparent. And I actually, and, and Patty told me, you know, you told me, you said, record, you know, just a couple of pictures, a couple journal, write about your journey. But I didn't even think of that because I said, well, let me make it there first. And then I'll think of it because I was in a whole other mindset. A couple of days leading to the, the, the trip, and the, the speech, the, the semifinals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I remember starting to feel like I was coming down with a cold. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, no, because people were telling me, Mariam, you're going to get sick. Mariam, you need sleep. You know, Mark Brown told me when he was helping me out, he said, 
You need to take your vitamins. You need to take care of yourself. You need to still get some exercise. I, th- I said, that's a lot of things to do, you know, when you're, because that's usually what I do. That is my lifestyle. But I had completely forgotten about myself. I was, I felt like I was in a cave, like a cave woman, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all I had was my laptop, my screen, and I needed my, my mind and a cup of coffee and we're good. One cup of coffee? Oh, maybe 10, <laughs> maybe 10. And I'm not exaggerating. Yes. I had a lot of coffee. I didn't eat. I didn't, it was, it was not a good place to be, but I was loving it at the same time. This is the problem is that it, I was so passionate about it. And I mm-hmm. said, this is my dream. This is mm-hmm. what I've been wanting to do. So it wasn't, it didn't feel forced. It mm-hmm. just felt like I was on a time bomb mm-hmm. and I needed to, to run. And I was, I truly was. So I started feeling like I was getting sick. Of course, my immune system at this point, mm-hmm. my body was telling me, please give me a break. <laughs> no, no break for no you. Break. <laughs> no sleep, no eat, no break. You know, so that was, that was, um, it, it, the consequences were starting to, to show and appear literally two days before, I think Friday, I spoke mm-hmm. at your club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I started to get sick there. I started taking all Actually in the morning, of- you said, I'm not even tricking. You didn't even think you can make it to my club. Yeah. I was feeling so sick, but I said, you know what? It's the last time. So it's the last opportunity to, to, to practice. But yeah. yeah, you were not, you know, I said, you can go sleep after, which I'm sure you did not do. I didn't sleep <laughs> after. Forget it. I was, I was more awake because then yeah. I spoke and I was pumped up. Oh, I was so good, Mariam. That was a very good Oh one. my God. Yeah, regardless of my. She uh, delivered the two um, speeches yeah. at my club. Oh, I, I cried. People, people thought I was deranged because I was crying so much. I was like, oh, I'm <laughs> the recording. I have it in recording. <laughs> It was so good. You were like on fire. I'm mean, like, when you're sick, you're the best. <laughs> That's what it is. It's because yes. I needed to overcompensate for yes. feeling sick. But at that point, nothing, I did not appear sick. I just felt it because it's the beginning, you know? You had a high fever, very I high fever. I was having fever and I was taking cold effects and natural things to, to you know, zinc and all kinds of supplements to, to make up for it. And that now I started drinking water, <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> you know, I um. started eating fruits <laughs> and all the good stuff it was too and, late. It was too and late. veggie green powder. <laughs> it was, it was too late. The damage has already been done. <laughs> and I remember thinking, okay, well, it's going to pass. This is probably the peak. Oh no, that was not the peak. That was just, a, that was just a taste <laughs> of what was about to come. And so then I was, um, I went to Toronto. Okay. I had a flight to Toronto and I was flying the Monday and the Tuesday morning I was leaving to the Bahamas. So there was a night that I was spending in Toronto and that's when I started feeling sick Mm -hmm. and come to the day that I was on the plane. And, and of course we're not talking about running around because I was putting, putting it, I was literally forgetting about everything. And I thought, Oh, I haven't packed yet. (laughs) You know, this is in the Bahamas, Miriam. You need to start packing. And don't forget, I'm legally blind. So it's this is a whole other subject, but I touch everything. It looks funny. Um, I I run on slow motion compared to a a person who is fully sighted. So I need more time to do Mm -hmm. things, to do certain tasks. And so this was really this was a whole adventure on itself shopping before what am I going to wear on stage? Mm. What am I thinking of this right now? You know? And so all this happened 48, 70, you know, 48 hours before the, the trip, because I didn't want to waste my time on all these things because I wanted to work. Mm-hmm. And so I get to Toronto We're we're about to fly. And that's when my ears are clogged. I'm my, I'm starting to, I think I started a little bit like a, my throat was hurting. I think a cough was on its way. And I thought, do I have an ear infection? Oh, no. What am I? And now my overthinking side comes in. What am I going to do? Uh, what am I going to do on stage? What if I cough? What if I go on stage? <laughs> what if I want to sneeze? You know, what if I have a nasal voice? You know, what's going to happen? And I thought, and I packed a bag full of medication and that still wasn't enough. So I remember on the plane, I was having a lot of trouble because my ears were clogged. Mm. And, I, and then I started thinking, you know, we, well, I, I always have a catastrophe side and going on in my head. 
And one voice was telling me, oh, what if your eardrums pop? What if you lose oh. your sense of hearing? That's all you have left. You know? so <laughs> dramatic. I was so dramatic on the plane. And I, and I think I was, I was running on no sleep. So at this point, my brain wasn't even working. My logical side was shut down completely, you know? And I was, yeah, that's when I thought, okay, I'm getting sick. It is what it is. What do you want me to do? We're, I'm getting sick. Let's just go with the flow. And then I get to the Bahamas. Patty wasn't here yet. She, she, she was arriving on the Wednesday. I arrived on Monday. Now that I was still, okay, I wasn't coughing yet. I was just my, my throat, this, that, you know, bit of fever here and there. At this point, I was still thinking about how, if I, am I going to get more sick than this? <laughs> and I did get more sick. So wow. after rehearsal, I was still rehearsing at, at the hotel room. I still had Alexandre on uh, on FaceTime on my uh, on Zoom, and we we're still working. And I, at some point, I said Alexandre, and it was in plain daylight. I don't remember what time it was. I think I lost track of time too. I mm -hmm. said Alexandre, my eyes are they feel so heavy. They're closing. I feel tired, like I could sleep two days in a row. And he said, oh, don't do that. <laughs> now, now it's not time to sleep anymore. You know? Now it's when you have to be awake. So I thought, okay, I'm going to, he said, you know what? Go take a nap, go relax. I said, okay. I napped. I remember I never felt so sick in maybe three years. I hadn't been this sick. It's just a feeling, and you know, when you're uh, when you're the fever and you're sweating it out, and I I think I made the room a sauna. I brought brought up the, the oh eats, you know, because it was so. And I I was I I went on the balcony. I I was breathing some nice hot air, mm -hmm. and um, I remember waking up and I you know sweat out the fever. But that's when I started really mm -hmm. coughing, getting feeling sick, not feeling well, and that's when actually I, I told my friend I said. I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'll be able to do this. I don't think I'll be able to go on stage. How am I going to do this? And I thought I can always back away. <laughs> and I remember Patty told me, if you back away, you know what you're going to do? You're not doing a favor for, for people, for the world, because you have a message you need to share. Remember when you said that? Um, yes, I remember. I can't <laughs> back away now. So I thought, you know, when everything goes wrong, quote unquote, I mean, it's not a big deal to have a cold, but it becomes a big deal when you need, when, when it's a big day. Right, and you're talking moment. to the entire world and you're speaking on stage <laughs> you know and i thought well how do speakers you know very very top professional speakers deal with it when they're sick i guess i'm gonna find out <laughs> and i remember i was coached by a very good friend of mine who is a professional comedian here in quebec and he told me he said you know i i get on stage even if i'm sick i don't care i'm used to it but he's a comedian so he can make fun of himself you mm -hmm. know so I thought if he could, you know, if he could do it, then there's a way for me to do it. And that's when I just, um, I just started accepting that whatever the, you know, there was a plan for me. And I started mm -hmm. accepting that there was going to be bumps along the way. There was going to be obstacles along the way. Things were going to go wrong, but this is the beauty of the journey. Mm -hmm. This is what I, I was meant to be living it. Mm -hmm. And I told myself, I said, if you make it through, it's going to be even more rewarding because mm -hmm. all these little pickles, right, mm -hmm. happened along the way. And um, the day, was it the same? Yeah, the same day of my semifinal is when I, I remember taking a lot of medication mm -hmm. that morning. Patty, I called Patty. I said, Patty, come, come help me, please. <laughs> There's, I don't know. I, I messed up my eyeliner. I need help with my makeup. This is the reality. This is the reality of, of having a visual impairment. It's, there are going to be difficult moments. And I think Patty saw it mm -hmm. live in front of her. Mm -hmm. And I said, my, I don't know what I did. I think I brought my eyeliner all the way here. <laughs> and I did something with my mascara and my brows were halfway <laughs> on top of my forehead. <laughs> Because and I mean, the hair, the hair. The hair. And you mm. need to, I thought of it. I said, the lapel mic, it's going to, on the mm. lapel, you know, it's going to make a sound. So we need to figure this out. And that was the morning of. And so she came to help me in the room. I had my cough syrup. At that point, I was walking around with the cough syrup, drinking straight out of the bottle, <laughs> you know. And I said, just, I'm going to take a little sip right before getting on stage so it could soothe my throat. Worst mistake I made because that's when I realized I did that on an empty stomach we're walking down to go to 10 minutes away mm -hmm. 10 minutes away from the contest Patty I feel dizzy well I have a video of this instead of 
Yes, I'll share the video. Yeah, right you have now. the video of this. Mm-hmm. That I feel mm-hmm. high on this medication. I don't know what it did to me. I'm not feeling well. I feel dizzy. I was joking at the beginning, but it was starting to make me feel not right, nauseous, everything, you name it. And I thought, oh no, I did something. I shouldn't have taken all these. And it was this nasal spray with the cough syrup, with everything that I gravel, anti-nausea medication. I, I did the whole thing. And uh, I remember telling her, Patty, I'm not feeling well. Patty was equipped for some reason. I, I felt like, you know, she had everything. She had a, a bag. You had a bag. So, you know, in case I wanted to, to, to get sick in the bag. Mm-hmm. And then I said, do you have bread? <laughs> You had bread. And I was at the moment when I panicked. I panicked then because there was a long lineup, one hour to get to Starbucks. Yeah. It was a delicious cafe, Madeleine. An hour and a half to get your food. So I said, Oh my God, she's never going to get her bread. We were like late. We I don't know late. why I felt like I needed bread because the only thing that I don't know, is it an Arab thing? I have no idea. <laughs> but somehow, yeah. Yeah, but then somehow. I remember that I actually had some because I figured I won't have time to eat. I need to have some snacks. So I actually had bread. But that was a miracle because I really freaked out for a moment. I said, this girl's going to be sick and I have yeah. nothing to, I cannot get her. And she gave me a piece of croissant mm-hmm. and it was perfect because my, you know, it kind of helped me kind of give me some boost of energy. And I also had this idea of having baby food before speaking, mm-hmm. which is a great, it's actually a really good idea before you speak because it's bland food. There's mm-hmm. nothing in it. And it's it's already mashed up, so you're good. You don't need to digest, you don't need to digest anything. So it's, uh, I had baby food and a piece of croissant. And she's and and Patty, you told me, uh, um, Darren Darren Lacroix. Mm. Uh, uh, he he was a champion, and he ate a banana before his uh, his speech. So I'm, I'm gonna eat a banana too, and that's mm. it. And that was good. I was feeling better. I then five you skipped minutes the part where you were swaying you, you couldn't barely even stand up oh yeah you, yeah 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 that was the part when I realized I was feeling nauseous okay you were being I was feeling dizzy about it, okay. mm-hmm. yeah I was, I was feeling okay. really really because dizzy. I was afraid you were gonna fall on your even my mom is a witness I yeah. was afraid you were gonna fall on your face that's what I felt like was gonna happen I couldn't I, even stand up on the stage I couldn't yeah I felt so dizzy and it was a mix of physically not feeling well and on top nerves. of the nerves mm-hmm. and then the I'm getting paranoid. What if, and all the ca- catastrophical moments, what if I fall on stage? What if, what if I, you know, mm-hmm. what, what if I get sick on stage? You know, mm-hmm. and then I thought, you know, what? <laughs> worst case, it happens. Mm-hmm. What do you want me to do yeah. at this point? Right. I was laughing by then at that point. Oh, Patty's <laughs> attitude was the perfect attitude. I needed someone to calm me down and to make, to minimize everything that was happening. And she did, you did such a good, thank you so much. Honestly, we pray, I think the prayer the, did the, the yeah, trip, but yeah. uh, Patty prayed for because me because I said at this point, this God, look, this girl, this girl can't even stand straight here. Help <laughs> her out, please just let her get on the stage for seven minutes. Yeah, seven <laughs> okay, minutes. we just need seven minutes, yeah, God, you know, do your yeah. thing, and then you know, anyway. So, yeah. and she prayed, and after the prayer, I sat down, I had the little piece of croissant <laughs> that really helped. And uh, things were starting to get better. And I think the adrenaline kicked in. And I thought, Mariam, now you're going in fight or flight mode. You have to do this. There's mm-hmm. no way around mm-hmm. it. No matter how you feel, it's seven minutes. You get on the stage and you give the audience your best. And I remember saying that on video, I think. Mm-hmm. That video, I yes, said, I nice. want to give the audience the best of me. Mm-hmm. I want to share a message with the world. I want to help someone. In my, someone in my audience needs to hear this. And that's what I was focusing on. I was, I switched the focus from focusing on how I felt and on myself. And I started to think of my audience and I, and that was actually the perfect thing for me to do at that moment. Mm -hmm. And it was a great advice given by many of of my Mm -hmm. great coaches. Mm -hmm. They were always told me, put the focus on your audience. Don't Mm -hmm. focus on yourself. It's not about you. It's about the message, not about the messenger. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And even though, yeah. We had a couple of other things happening. I wanted to, I wanted to go to the washroom five minutes before I had drank so much water. All of a sudden I need to go to the washroom five minutes before getting on, getting mic'd up. Then we leave the washroom. We're rushing. Oh, Patty, there's something that, that just happened. I asked her for, to pass me my bottle of water. It turns out there was honey all over <laughs> them. There was honey, Manuka honey, or I don't know what kind of honey there was. Uh, stuck on the bottle it's stuck all over my fingers and I said I can't I need to wash it off because I'm gonna be holding a prop Mm -hmm. I have a straw I don't want this trying to get stuck (laughs) you know so we went back washed it off and went back again and made it right on time one minute I think right before and they told me okay you need to get mic'd up I went backstage and I remember I had a box of napkins I was blowing my nose uh 
and taking, and I had um, a little candy and I had my friend with me backstage. And then all of a sudden, Verity Price shows up and she she was so sweet. I just felt these not like warm hands. You know, she gave me a hug and she said, you're going to do so well. You know, she, she had this beautiful voice yeah. and it was so calming. And she gave me a hug and she said, you're going to do so well. I said, Verity, I have a cold. I'm not feeling well. <laughs> oh, you've overcome so much more than a cold in your life. Come on. And I said, you know what? Yeah. She's right. Mm -hmm. And another angel was sent mm -hmm. on my path, another angel. And uh, my friend held my hands and said, you're going to do great. I know that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even have time. I just, I just went. And I thought right before I stepped on stage, I said, oh, I could have another sip of water. Oh, well, too late. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Oh, yeah. God. That was the whole adventure. Oh, really? It was very hard for the blood pressure, Maria. Was, but more yeah. for you than for anyone else. But oh my goodness. It was an adventure. There's one thing with interviewing champions and, you know, talking to champions, but like living it while yeah. it's happening is just a whole other story. So speaking of that, can you tell us what was your first reaction when you found out that you made it to the final round, the top eight best speakers in the world? I think my reaction was a little bit, um, it was a mix <laughs> I, it's, mm -hmm. it wasn't like at the district, it was so clear. Mm -hmm. I was just oh, in disbelief. I was, I cried on stage when they told me for mm -hmm. the, uh, for the district, because I thought this might happen. Like mm -hmm. something big just happened. But I think when that was announced at the semifinals, it was a mix of emotions. It was, I'm so excited. I'm so scared. Mm -hmm. Is this going to work out? I'm actually making it to the world stage. Mm -hmm. And it's, I can't believe I'm here right now. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe I just heard my name. This must be, and for some reason, I always have this thing. This must be a mistake. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> when I hear my name, I always think this must be a mistake. <laughs> They're going to be like, oh, I'm sorry. Wait, <laughs> that's not Maryam. No, it's someone else. I was just waiting for that moment. Oh but I God. think I was in, and I was relieved. I was relieved because that's another thing that, it wasn't necessarily the right, I mean, it's my feelings, but ne not necessarily well justified. I felt relieved because I knew there were so many people who helped me, mm -hmm. so many people who believed in me. I was so afraid to let them down that the feeling of relief, like, oh, they're not going to be disappointed. And I know it's not, people told me, they came up to me, Darren and Mark came up to me, said, we're proud of you no matter what mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, don't tell me that because, you know, I'm scared. And I remember tearing. I was crying when Mark told me that. And he said, you know, his voice is mm -hmm. beautiful. Such a kind, respectful man. He said, young lady, but why the tears? And I said, because I'm scared, Mark. I'm really scared. And I remember tearing. And I think we have a picture of that. You have a picture I of it. Picture everything. I was <laughs> crying right before the announcement. I said, I'm so scared. I don't want to let you down. He said, you're never going to let us down. Mm -hmm. We're proud of you no matter what. And having that kind of support to me was, I'm telling you now, I, I feel it and I'll never change my mind on that. That was greater than any triumph, any win, anything, mm. because it's one thing, you know, winning, but it's one thing winning, knowing that you have people mm -hmm. who supported you and that if anything goes wrong, mm -hmm. they're still going to be yes. there for you. And that was the most beautiful gift. And along that journey, this is the biggest gift, mm -hmm. the biggest blessing, in my opinion, that I, that I got. It was having all these amazing connections building all these beautiful relationships, these beautiful bonds and friendships. Mm -hmm. And that's what it, it was about. Mm -hmm. And I realized it's only after, only after, because in the moment you don't feel it, mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't have time to reflect. Mm -hmm. But I remember the relief was strong. It was, it was a mix of emotions. It was excitement and it was, okay, now what? Mm -hmm. You know? And I didn't even have time to get back down from the clouds because you don't have time to digest and, to live it, to live the moment. And it's, you got to keep going. Mm -hmm. You got to keep going. I remember right after I said to, to Darren, um, okay, I'm going to go right back to work. I said, okay, take a bit of a break, go to the beach, relax. Now you can take a break, Mariam. Now you can take at least an hour or two. Mm -hmm. Remember and you said that too? Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, I'll take a break. So I went, I'm getting ready, you know, okay, fine. I'm going to go to the beach. Oh my God. And I'm getting ready, but I'm also so excited and I'm not thinking straight because all the emotions and people were stopping me everywhere and pictures. And it was just very hectic. 
And so you don't have time to ground yourself. And I remember Verity said, Mariam, take off your shoes, go walk on grass, go walk on sand. You need to ground yourself. Great mm -hmm. advice. I absolutely loved it. And I said, okay, I'm going to go to the beach and I'm going to ground myself right there, you know, mm -hmm. get in the water and uh, just let everything sink in. I'm getting ready and I get a phone call. <laughs> Mariam, forget about the beach. You need to be ready. You need to do the, uh, what was it? Not rehearsal. It, it was, was the debriefing contestant debriefing for the next contest mm. it was literally and i had forgotten because uh they and they told us you know your debriefing for the world championship is very shortly after the mm. contest ends so it's maybe not even an, an hour or two hours after two hours not even yeah two yeah. hours and i thought oh no they did tell us but because i was not thinking i was going to make it through that i didn't even think of that mm. And I, I said, forget about the beach. You got to get ready. You got to go. You're going to miss it. So I was, you know, mm -hmm. rushing to get to, to, to the contestant debriefing. I made it and I said, hey, I'm here. Well, we just finished, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, they gave me all the, um, mm -hmm. all the things I needed to know. There was a letter from, um, was it Ed Tate who wrote a letter mm -hmm. because he, he gave a word, he shared a word with mm -hmm. the contestant. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, you know. They had to, they had to kind of do the debriefing a little quicker, but mm -hmm. again, you know, they walked me through all everything and thankfully they weren't gone. So that's fine. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, oh, that's it. that was something. Yeah. Whew. That was something. Yes. <laughs> when you left the stage after delivering your last speech. Yeah. At that moment, did you think that you might have a chance to earn the title at that point when you stepped off the stage? Oh, and please. There's a link right here and right down there <laughs> to see that <laughs> final speech. You have no idea. Please watch it. I. Onet, let's be honest here. <laughs> okay. My, okay. <laughs> the thing is because it was so hard for me to understand my own emotions at that point because I was all over the place. Mm -hmm. I'd never been lived or experienced mm -hmm. anything like that before I didn't even know what the right thing was for me to think but at that moment I was so focused on making it as a world champion mm. that to me there was no other option mm. I didn't even consider maybe I wasn't that good maybe there are people who are better than me and they were of course they were I was third <laughs> but they were Everybody was amazing. It was, mm -hmm. it was a great contest. And I remember the president, I think, said that was a very strong contest. Mm -hmm. And I was, I barely even took in the, the, the speeches of others because I was so in my head. And I don't even know what I was thinking of, to be honest with you. I was just focusing on, okay, I need to do this. This needs to happen. No matter what, this needs to happen. There's no other choice. That was my focus. And that wasn't my focus before the district. That wasn't my focus after the district. It became my focus maybe a week before the Bahamas for some reason. And, and I was, and there was another voice telling me for some reason, I had a vision on that too. Mm -hmm. For I don't remember if I saw a number somewhere or if I saw it in my head three, mm. but I had this feeling three. Mm -hmm. And I remember when they said, third place I looked at you and I said no not me do you remember that um yes yes we are I said no 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 yeah. not me please not me because I felt like mm, I had this weird feeling that I wasn't gonna place first but I had the expectation to place first and mm -hmm. that expectation is what really hit my 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 ego my um it it it, it really it hurt because when your expectation is so high and you don't get where you're expecting mm -hmm. to get, that's where you get hurt. Mm -hmm. And that was the mistake is not to expect the mm -hmm. first place. You can hope for it, but don't expect it. Mm -hmm. Expect the worst. I should have been expecting to not even place, mm -hmm. you know, at that point. So that's how I felt. But I felt like, as usual, not that great. Didn't give my best not not good enough and i even i remember every time i deliver i turn around to patty and i say how did i do how was it was it good no it wasn't the best right it wasn't the best and patty says it was your best one i said no don't no lie to me man <laughs> what well, you don't listen to me i always tell you the truth but you don't listen and i said are you sure it was the best one it was the best one you gave and i thought 
oh, there's something that tells me it wasn't, but it's okay, we'll take it. And um, I think, yeah, I think I expect it to be first, but I knew that, I knew logically that it wasn't, it was maybe not going to happen. It wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think, like I said, the, the best thing to expect, and someone said that quote, and I love it, is, you know, hope for the best, expect the worst, you know, and prepare for it mm -hmm. because you never know what happens mm -hmm. and you got to roll with what you, what you get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And there's so many variables, Miriam. Oh yeah. Like the judges, like there's a whole judges ballot yes. and there are so many different factors, but you were outstanding. I'm telling you, everybody, well, many people thought that you were going to be first anyhow, but that doesn't mean, and I told you, it doesn't matter what people think because mm. a lot of um, individuals, um, they will remain nameless, were convinced you're going to be first or that they knew that you were going to make it and you're going to make it to the podium. I did not know that you're going to be first. But I knew you were going to be a champion, okay? And for me, you're a champion, okay? Aww. You got the, the bronze medal, if we put it like in the Olympic terms. So for me, you're, you've made it. And, I, and speaking of that, I thought you were like the first person who was legally blind to have made it to the podium. But I found out that uh, Dana, Lamont. Dana Lamont became world champion in 1992. But you seem to be, I checked around in the history, you seem to be the first legally blind female who made it to the podium. <laughs> yeah, for the I record. think so. I think so. I've never seen... Not to my knowledge, because I, I I binge watched all the uh, champion, the world championships, yes. and I didn't see any other. Uh, I googled it yeah. thoroughly because I want to give accurate information. Anyway, you appear to be it, so please correct me if I'm wrong, someone. <laughs> and on top of that, it was the second time in history that we had an all female top three winners of the world championship. The last time was uh, when Ramona J Smith yeah, and the world series Sue. That's correct. So that, that was the last time that three women made it. So can you describe? What it felt like when you heard that? Okay, well, you sort of touched on that. You were disappointed, but how was it in the end, in retrospect, to have shared that podium with two other strong oh, women? That was powerful, and I didn't. I mean, it's a, it's you know, we we can say it's powerful, we can say it's empowering, but it felt powerful. I was sitting on on the podium on stage with two other women, and I thought, wow, these are some strong women yes. here. <laughs> am I part of them? <laughs> am, I, am I considered to be one of them? You know, I was asking myself this question. I want to be completely transparent about it because this is this is what happened. You know, I can't I can't hide it. So I was. Um, I remember when they said number three. I said, "Oh no!" You know, and we have a video of that. Um, I'd love to show it, but my reaction was like, "I lost. I lost." Yeah, it was. I lost, and I said, "No, Patty, I don't want to go. I don't want to go on stage." And she said, "Mariam, come on, you made it." You made it. You won. And she <laughs> made me realize that I did make it. You know, it's not make it to the first, but I made it to the podium, like you said. So I it took me some time to realize that. Um, but all that to say that I'd been I'd been crying backstage. I was I was hurt and the, the tears were not just from feeling like I lost or like I failed or mm. the tears were all the buildup. Mm -hmm. All these months mm. of hard work, of faith, of believing in what you cannot see, of of just perseverance, you know, all that. And then just all came down. Mm -hmm. And so those were the, the emotions, mm -hmm. the tears that were coming out. Um, but I just remember when I sat there, I'd wipe my tears. Thankfully, I had um, waterproof mascara. <laughs> so that didn't show, hopefully. I know my eyeliner was probably smudged. And the concealer was gone too. Oh yeah, that was gone. <laughs> we tested the waterproofness <laughs> of the concealer. That was <laughs> that was gone. But you know, I still, I think I still looked. Oh, thankfully the camera wasn't too close. <laughs> and um, so I, I just remember thinking, wow, these women are so you know, they have integrity, they're proud. Mm. Nisha was, you know, mm. she was, she's, she's an example because mm. she was saying, oh, I'm going to come back again and again yeah. and again until yeah. I make it first. And I yeah. thought, wow, she's so determined. Like mm. I, I was thinking I'm never going to speak again. Mm -hmm. And I felt embarrassed and ashamed of how, of my reaction. I said, am I, do I want to show up like this in front of the world? Mm. Is this the person I want to be? Because when we and I realized that all, all then afterwards also, when we go through difficulty, it's an opportunity to choose 
who do we want to become? Mm. It's an opportunity to recreate who you are, mm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity to, if you were a, a kind of person that you didn't like how you were before, it's your chance to become that new person. Mm. Because I could now choose who I wanted to be in front of the world. And that's an opportunity to build my character. And I thought, no, that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to be stronger than that. I've overcome more. And this is a chance that I took. It's a risk that I took. And we only learn when we take risks. And as Nisha said herself, mm -hmm. when we fail, fail again mm -hmm. and again and again. And she kept saying it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I have so much to learn from these women. Mm -hmm. And that's why I felt so good being on that podium with two other women, mm -hmm. because they showed me the example uh, of how strong, perseverant, and confident mm. you could be. Yes. Yeah. It was uplifting. Yeah. It was a blessing. It was really nice. Yes. Oh, I was, uh, you really deserve that that uh, that win, Maria. Okay. Like, uh, you worked hard. And there's a lot that was left unsaid because I don't know if it was clear, but you had a lot of people helping you, like, even all the way there, coming to your room, you know, oh, <laughs> giving yeah. you feedback and... Uh, Alexandre was not even here. I guess he was touristing because you had so many coaches, right? Uh, so many people who, who guided you, yes. but he was also there, like virtually. He oh, yeah. There physically. He but... was there almost all the time. <laughs> I was calling him, Alexandre, did you hear what happened? Alex, you know, he was yeah. always there, mm -hmm. even in pictures. Yes. He was there on, uh, on yeah. Zoom or on FaceTime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Maria, we're at the moment of truth here. Uh oh. Okay. We want to know what would be your best advice? For a Toastmasters contestant to help them on their journey to make it to the finals. So really, something you wish someone would have told you when you first decided to start competing. Like this new Maria, I'm right here. <laughs> you transport yourself in time. Give me like your best, your top best 10 tips on what you wish somebody would have. Although, you know what? I We told you, not just me. A lot of people told you. Because as soon as we left the district for the record, before you get started, you were done in the district. I said, Mariam, you have to assume that you made it and you're going to make it to the semifinals. No, but I suck. I suck. I should start speaking. <laughs> said, no, assume you're going to go and don't pull a Ramona, you know, Jason, yeah. Smith, who wrote a speech after she found out. Start writing it now. That was in April. Yeah. You know, so anyway, all this to say, just a little hint if you don't know where to start. Like, just whatever you mm -hmm. wish that you can tell yourself and that you'd actually listen. If I started from the club or after district? Mm, from the club, because like we have about what? 30,000 some contestants that uh, yes. compete every year. So talk to these people. And even whoever, even if you're not part of Toastmasters and all this, uh, you know, you find it's exciting and you want to make it to the world, uh, you know, championships yeah. uh, stage mm -hmm. to share a message that is dear to your heart. You have plenty of time to get started. So yeah. someone starting at the club level. Perfect. You know? Okay. <clears throat> your best. Just I have, I have stuff to say on that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, let me just sit properly. Yeah. I'm going to get but, comfortable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So the first thing, because you mentioned Ramona, I just wanted to say, Ramona was, and you reminded me of it. Mm -hmm. And again, having good people around you, that is one thing. If you do not have people around you, you, I don't know how, how I would have done it. I don't consider that I did it. I considered we did it mm -hmm. because there's no way on earth. I cannot believe a single moment that anybody who succeeded, who's reached high levels of success in their life that they did it all by themselves I, I have a hard time believing that it's it, there's always someone to to say thank you to because they've been there they've supported emotionally whatever that may be uh you know and I have so many people around me and like Darren Lacroix said you have an army of people mm. and I felt like that and and that was really nice. And one of the reasons, because I asked for help, because I wanted it, because I knew that I would have to. And I got used to asking for help with my condition, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but Ramona was a huge motivation for me. And it was my hope. Because I was so close to the date of the contest. I And, and you were repeating, if Ramona did it, you can write the speech. And I was repeating, if she did it in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. She wrote her speech two, one day yeah. or two days mm -hmm. before, one day before the the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure she had some kind of she base. Had some, yes. She had something. You can check out her interview there. She didn't she write it from it. scratch completely. That's she does explain. I think mm -hmm. I saw her interview and she, she does explain mm -hmm. it. But if I, I said, if Ramona could write her speech, then I can do it in 14 days. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing, 13 days, in seven days. Mm -hmm. in six, Cause 
it kept evolving yes. and people were telling me do not change a single thing mm. that's another thing i would say so Preach. yeah that's do not change but if i had to start from the beginning mm -hmm. i want to start from the basics i would say if you never thought of competing why is it because you're not interested in competing or is it because you don't think you can be one of these people you don't think that you're that you have a place there you don't think you can even cross the club the area the division and get to specific levels because i never thought i could get there somebody had to show me that i could and i, I would have loved for me to ask myself that question maryam why did did you hesitate after the club and the division and the area why were you scared why did you and that's because i didn't think I was a good enough speaker mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to make it through, or I had enough skills, enough experience, enough confidence, whatever that is when, you know, and I, I don't want to assume for everyone, but I just, I personally didn't feel enough mm -hmm. to make it through. So I would say the first thing is to work on the mind, the mindset, the confidence, the belief. And I would have liked someone to, to tell me not to focus you told me, but I didn't listen. Don't focus on the win. Mm. Focus on the growth. Focus on, and and I, I and I heard that many times, Mariam. You're not going to be the same person after this experience, and it's true. I feel I feel like I grew, you know, spiritually. I grew so much afterwards as a speaker. I, I gained experience, skill. I, I, I built my character. I decided who am I going to be when I don't get where I'm, I'm expecting to get in life? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen if I feel like I've stumbled or did something? What do I, how do I respond? Who is Miriam? Mm -hmm. I, I discovered who I truly was. So I would say work on the mindset. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself why you would or would not do it. Why am I competing? But why am I, why would I not compete? What's the real motivation behind it? What's the real intention behind it? And the other thing I would say is along the way, act as though you've already won. Mm. And Scott helped me do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the major reasons why I made it there. Because I didn't mention that to you, but Scott would tell me almost every time we spoke, Mariam, I want you to tell me before we hung up, he said, Miriam, I want you to tell me three reasons why you won the world championship. Mm. Three reasons why you won the district. Three reasons mm. why you won the division. He always tells me, why did you win? I haven't, hadn't won yet. Mm. But he's putting me in that mindset mm. because not only it makes you visualize yourself that you've already made it, makes you feel like it's possible, mm -hmm. but it also makes you set yourself up for success because you're telling yourself what you need to be doing mm -hmm. when you answer these questions. I made it because I worked hard. Mm -hmm. I made it because I focused. I made it because I believed in myself. And every time it would be three different reasons. Mm -hmm. And I so like that, that really, really helped. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, why did I make it every step of the way? That's one thing. The other thing, and I think that's very important, is in the same realm of act as though you made it, mm -hmm. Also prepare a speech as mm -hmm. though you made it. Don't wait. Don't pull a Miriam Gani. Don't pull a, a don't 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 do the last minute thing. Do not do it. And it could happen. It could happen that you don't like your speech. Like Mark told me, he said in 1995, I wrote a speech, and uh, on August 1st, he said he didn't like it, and he started all mm -hmm. over again, mm -hmm. and he won first yeah. place. But those are just like Mark, like Ramona. Uh, those are just one in a, I don't know in how many, you know, it's, you're playing with fire. Don't do it. Prepare your speech, have an idea and have two speeches, actually, not just one, mm -hmm. have two speeches, at least have the idea. And if the idea came to you, when you felt inspired, when you didn't feel under pressure, that's the one, that's the one, mm -hmm. that's your first instinct. That's your message. That's what your heart told you. But if you're starting to form new ideas when you're under pressure, you're closer to the date, mm. your focus is not going to be out of inspiration, out of feeling, 
passionate about the message is going to be more like, oh, I want to win. Maybe this is a better speech. Mm -hmm. So don't keep looking for, I would tell myself, I would tell the old Miriam, don't look for a better speech. The message is there. The story is in you. The message is in you. Keep focused, stay on track on the same idea mm -hmm. and don't let people, even if they're the best speakers, don't take advice from too many people. <laughs> Stick to one person, two people, maybe, you know, and um, don't let yourself get pulled in many directions. Just keep focusing on one idea and focus on that. And that idea will grow. It could be as simple as talking about your cat, like mm -hmm. Scott McLaughlin said, and you could make this the most powerful speech anyone has ever heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that is That's a lot of good <laughs> advice. Let's see what else we can extract out of you. <laughs> tell me, tell me, there's more. How about how you neglected your well-being? Oh, I need a sip. Yeah, of let's take a sip. It. Let's take a sip together for that. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Cheers. To that. <laughs> Actually, like I said, Mark told me, Mariam, take your vitamins, do your exercise, you know, whatever you do, pray, meditate, do what you have to do. Yeah, don't neglect yourself. No matter what it is, even if you're working on a very important project, uh, it doesn't even have to be for the contest. Mm -hmm. This could ap apply for anything else, anything you care about so dearly. If I had to do it all over again, which I'm thinking maybe I should do it all over again. I'm still, still reflecting on it. But if I had to do it really all over again, I would do things completely differently. Mm. Oh, first of all, I would not panic. I remember um, Mark Brown was saying, do not panic. Mark, how do you mean not to panic? We're a couple of days before the, before the contest. Do not panic. There's no point of panicking. Mm -hmm. Start with two speeches. Be prepared and think. And, and, and the schedule has to have you in it. Mm -hmm. If you're not in your own schedule, there is no way you can be at your best and give the audience the best of you. Mm -hmm. That's what I realized. This is what I would tell Miriam as she was as mm -hmm. she was running like a bull who saw red. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I couldn't see anything. I just saw black. <laughs> I, <know>. <laughs> I was just running. But I would tell Miriam that I would tell put you in the schedule. And I remember having another coach who was so amazing. He's a he's a pastor. Mm. and um he's a mental health and financial coach and he happened to be another angel who came along my path and who told me along the way he said you know what Miriam if you don't put yourself in you know first you're not going to operate at your 100 percent mm. you're going to operate but you're operate at 20 percent mm. or 50 percent mm -hmm. and that's not the work you want to put in there so you need to take a break now. You need to take a step back. And he said, you need to take three days off. I said, what? His name is Chris. Chris, you want me to take three days off? I don't know. I can't afford three days. But yeah, this, this has to happen. You have to take breaks. Go out for walks. You know, smell some fresh air. Uh, eat well. Drink water. Not too much coffee. Yeah. Um, you know, meditate. Pray. See your friends. And I remember that's another thing right before the district it was around my birthday mm -hmm. and i remember telling scott scott i don't want to i don't think i'm going to do a, a birthday party it's, it's a waste of time i don't have time i have a district contest mm -hmm. i have to focus he said you're gonna you're gonna resent yourself if you don't do it because you need to still live your life mm -hmm. you need to still do things you need to still go out have fun it's going to put you in a beautiful mindset mm -hmm. and it was the same thing with with patty mm -hmm. patty I, uh, I invited me to go to church Mm. And I said, Patty, I really want to go because I love it, but I'm scared. This is three hours off my schedule and getting there and coming back. And she said, Mariam, this is going to refuel you. This is going to fuel you. It's going to give you the energy and the, the peace that you need to continue. And you know what? Mm. She was right. You're right. It recharged my battery. So keep recharging your battery. Think of yourself. Put yourself first in your schedule. Because without your health, without your well-being, without the energy you need to give the audience, you're not going to give them your mm -hmm. best. That's mm -hmm. that's what I would say. That's a big, big mm -hmm. one. It is. No. Yeah. I love all of this. I, I want to just... say follow your heart too. Mm. That's another one. 
follow. Mm -hmm. I know it's so corny, right? Follow your heart, but it's so true. Mm -hmm. If you have a message and it's coming from your heart, no matter what other technically amazing, well-written story you can have, mm -hmm. if that message doesn't come straight from your heart, it's not going to work for mm. you. So follow your heart. Your heart knows better than any professional out there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I call it divine inspiration that I got. Mm -hmm. And that's what I followed. And even though it was a big, it was a big bargain. It was a big chance mm -hmm. that I took a big uh, gamble. That's the word I'm looking for. I took to mm -hmm. rewrite the speech two weeks before, mm -hmm. but I just, I wanted to follow my heart. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do what was in here. Yes. And I remember when you were freaking out at one point, saying, what if I forget my words? What if you don't know? Oh, yeah. and I was telling you, it's a story about your daddy, but when you're growing up, you know your story because you were about to have a, a panic attack and we had no time for panic attack, okay? <laughs> like it was the night before. Yeah. We're in the room. There's a bunch of people helping you in the room, <laughs> you know, and I won't get into it, but the point is, yeah, I said, no, we don't have time for panic attack, you know? You know your story. No, no, no. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> and you kept wasting your time. You were so focused. I'm sorry. I'm going to start going wild here. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so true. You were so stuck on like the little things. What about yeah. this word? What about this title? Yes. You know, and then you started making crazy changes at the last minute. Oh, yeah. Girl, I won't even get into that. Yeah. But the point is, you were just completely, you, the panic, you let panic take over. Yes. You know? That's such a good one. Thank you. Yes. I love it. <laughs> That's why you have good friends because they call you out on your team. <laughs> you know, and she saw it's so true. I have that tendency. This is something I I really and you know what? Being part of of doing something like this, a contest, it doesn't just test your character. It puts you in a situation where you need to work on your character. Mm -hmm. You need to work on yourself as you're going because you're fighting your demons. You mm -hmm. know, if I can say it like that, because we all have certain tendencies and for some reason i had a tendency of wanting everything to be perfect i want the mm. perfect word i want the perfect sound but there's no such thing it's a big lie especially coming from me like there i'm far from being perfect mm. you know and you can repeat it there's no end you can change your speech with no end for the next 99 years yeah. you can be working on that speech mm. and keep changing it and everybody's better sounds different you know, if someone says this is better and the other person said that's better at some point. And I, I, I got a, a advice from this amazing person right before the district. Um, her name is Julie, Julie. And she said, just watch out because you're going to get a lot of great feedback. It doesn't mean you need to implement everything. Mm. That's where you need to follow your heart. Mm. That's where you need to, to know where to stop. What starts to not sound like you anymore and what sounds like you. So not because it's good, you have to use it. Mm -hmm. It has to sound like Miriam. Mm -hmm. And so that's the other thing. Don't make changes on last minute unless they are so necessary. Like if it's something crucial, but small that will not break the flow of your mm -hmm. speech or the flow of your words, then if you, if you can handle it, do it, mm -hmm. I would say. But not major changes before. The one week. Thing. They said it's one week, right? It's one week. Before. In your speech, one week. I was changing the night before. I added a whole the midnight, sentence. one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess what? That sentence that I added, I had removed because certain people said, Oh, mm -hmm. it's maybe too much. You don't need to put it. Mm -hmm. But then when I expressed it to Darren and I said, Darren, this is my intention when I when I want to add that sentence. This is my intention because that's what the message is. Mm -hmm. He said, Miriam, you didn't tell me that this is the message that you had in your heart, you know, that's, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Put it back. <laughs> so that was originally my thought, mm -hmm. but he just helped me, you know, reword it, but mm -hmm. that was originally there. So we put it back there and after I had to re-practice the ending and, and, and certain parts of my speech mm -hmm. another 15 times. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, well, it's 1 a.m. now. If I practice another mm -hmm. 15 times, I can at least get four hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So get enough sleep. That's another thing. <laughs> it's hard to sleep the night before a competition, mm -hmm. yeah, even if you're prepared 100 million percent, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And if I may, what, okay, so don't change anything before ties into be prepared. Mm -hmm. And Darren gave me the best advice. That was the best advice ever. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm ready. Don't let anyone 
over prepare you. Mm, yeah. That was such good advice. Mm-hmm. I just wish I'd known before. <laughs> well, <laughs> well I you did. said it at stage time. You know, I did. Times. <laughs> yes, I really did. But I, um, I'd um, i already like, it was already late. Too late yeah. Yeah, it was too late. Mm-hmm. But don't let anyone over prepare you. It means that you need to be so prepared mm-hmm. that you are confident about one thing. Mm-hmm. Not that you're going to win, but that you're extremely prepared and you're probably the most prepared person in the competition. Mm. Yeah, because preparation equals confidence. Mm -hmm. And when you speak with confidence, Mm -hmm. whatever you say will sound better, more convincing, and will capture the audience. Mm -hmm. That's what I I realized. And at that point, when you're so prepared, you're not focused on your words. You're not focused on how you look, sound. You're not focused on you anymore. You're focused on your audience. You're focused Mm -hmm. on living in the present moment with your audience and delivering Mm -hmm. so that's why preparation matters it's not even about the words Mm -hmm. it's about how you deliver them how you connect because when you're your speech and that's um i love i got so much advice linda marie miller told me become your speech Mm. no Mm. you you don't just learn it that was beautiful thank you linda yeah Yeah. what an amazing woman and she said you really right she she Mm -hmm. said mariam you gotta become your speech it has to be in you Mm -hmm. i said well how do you do that (laughs) and she said you're gonna understand that your message becomes who you are Mm -hmm. she gave me tricks on how to learn my speech she said walk at the same time do something physical Mm -hmm. as you're repeating the same uh sentence over and over again and i realized that also before this trick is I would do some physical, specific physical movement as I remembered specific sentences mm-hmm. and my brain would capture that. Mm-hmm. And then when I would say them, I would remember my movement. So mm-hmm. those are little hacks mm-hmm. uh, to learn your speech, but definitely don't focus on the words, focus on delivering, be extra prepared, like so prepared, you can say it backwards and mm-hmm. you can sing your speech. I remember mm-hmm. Scott telling me that. If you can say your speech backwards Mm. or sing it, you're prepared. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so that was what I was worrying about the night before. Yes. It was preparation. It was because I was changing things, new words, new concepts, new movements. Mm -hmm. And that kind of threw me off. Mm -hmm. Even though I pulled pulled it off, I didn't, you know, I didn't forget my words, thankfully. Because that could have happened. It happened to you and I. You remember? Oh, yeah. Uh, When we just froze. Well, because yeah. we did not internalize the speech because we kept making last minute changes yeah that's why i was insisting don't change anything don't change anything like we, you know we got into arguments but that's <laughs> true or whoever else was uh so many people were helping you so yeah it was just yeah some it people said you well you can yeah and it's it's fine you can get away with changing things but minor very very minor very minor and at that point like with the straw i did change a couple of things maybe six days five days leading towards maybe six, a week before I locked it in, which was mm-hmm, great. Mm-hmm. That's the perfect thing to do. The things that I changed were more delivery. Yes. It was how you say things, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the voice the intonation, mm-hmm. a couple of words, but that straw speech, mm-hmm. I had become that speech. Yes. Right? Yes, because like, it was like a long, I had months. I had months. It, yes. So the preparation was mm-hmm. already done. Yeah. So at that point, I was very comfortable. Mm. Even if I didn't know my exact word, I knew an alternate word, yes. an alternative word. Why? because I've spent months and months writing and rehearsing and re-delivering. Yes. So that's fine. But if you're, it's a new speech, definitely do not change it. Mm-hmm. Definitely do not. It's not worth it. No, yeah. no. And it's true. Patty, you told me about your experience when you froze. That <laughs> happened to me. And I was, I felt terrible. Mm. You know, you, you probably trauma? know. Trauma? Oh, it's a trauma. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm glad it happened, yes. actually. Mm-hmm. I'm glad it happened there and not on the world mm-hmm. stage. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would have, I don't know. No, I think I was too, I was too medicated. <laughs> My cough syrup was pumping me. It gave me the energy I needed. But I think I was too much um, on a fight or flight. And also, when I got to the stage, I felt like, okay, this is my moment to have fun. Mm. I'm on a world stage, mm. you know, like this is a big stage. I can't even see anyone, but okay. <laughs> I can feel it. Yeah. You know, I can feel that there are many people. I was told there's 900 people in the mm. physical audience. I don't know how many there were virtually. There were thousands. Yeah. Gosh. So I thought this is a moment to have fun. And no matter what happens, will happen. Mm. That's what I said. 
to myself right before stepping mm -hmm. on. And this is why I had so much fun with the audience. I laughed. Yes. With them. yes. Uh, I lived the moment, certain, even certain sentences, as much as I wanted them to come across in a certain way, mm -hmm. they came out differently. Yeah. And it made people laugh. Yeah. I didn't think it would be funny. Mm -hmm. But uh, live the moment with your audience. That's a huge one. Mm. Yeah. Yes. I had fun. I had so much fun with the audience. Yes. That's really rewarding. Did. Yeah. What else? Did we leave out anything else? Uh, okay, wait, let me think. I'm sure there's, some, there's so much more. <sighs> Maria, finally, if someone in the audience would like to reach out to you to invite you to deliver a keynote speech in their organization or at their district, what is the best way? All right. Well, I'm all over social media, contrarily to what uh, a lot of people, you know, they say, well, if you can't see, how do you use social media? Mm -hmm. Don't worry. <laughs> I have Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. I have a Facebook page, Mariam Gani Motivation. Mm -hmm. You can find me there. I'm on TikTok. Um, I'm almost on every social media you, mm -hmm. you can find. I also have WhatsApp for people who are overseas. I know sometimes it's easier. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to add my, my information, but mm -hmm. you can reach me by sending me an email, uh, gani.mariam at gmail.com. Yeah, you can reach me everywhere. <laughs> yes, wonderful. And is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Recently, I I spoke for a, a club where there were mainly visually impaired mm -hmm. and blind people. And can I tell you that my speech, I did the you have no idea. I don't know why I didn't do, I wasn't asked to do the semifinal, but I will be giving them the semifinal speech. But I did, you have no idea. And as I was talking specifically about my eyesight, I got so emotional mm. and I really had to hold myself from crying because it touched me in a whole other mm. way on a whole other level. It was such a powerful moment for me because I thought this is so beautiful. I get to share that story mm. that had painful moments of when I lost my sight with people who probably felt exactly mm. like that. You know, they know how I felt and I thought I was, because I'm, I'm thinking, how are they feeling? Are they getting affected mm -hmm. by it now? Is it going to make them cry? Is it going to make them sad? Mm -hmm. Is it going to make them happy? You know, I was thinking all these thoughts were going through my head. And I thought, this is the reason why I'm here today. Mm -hmm. It's to communicate to people specifically going through not just visual impairment, mm -hmm. sight loss, any challenge any challenge they may be facing that may be that made them feel at some point in their life like they've lost hope mm -hmm. that they see no end that uh, they don't think they're good enough or they could do something like I, at some point when I lost my sight I thought well am I going to be of any use mm. to this world and so that's the reason why I wanted to start speaking mm. and I want to re remind not only myself but anyone who thinks of competing or getting on stage whether it's to compete or just to speak mm -hmm. to people is to remind yourself why you're doing this, who are you doing this for and what you want them to feel after. Mm -hmm. And um, think of what you have gone through and use that experience to help others overcome their challenges. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. And that really touched me. And after my speeches, at the district, I had two people who had visual impairments who came to see me. Mm -hmm. I was so shocked. I was surprised. I said, there's, there are other people. You know, I, I knew there were other people, mm -hmm. but I thought it's more common than I thought. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's so beautiful because they were there, right, right there in the audience. And I thought maybe my message was literally for these two people today. Mm -hmm. And if it's, it's just these two people, I'm fine with it mm -hmm. because they came up to me with tears in their eyes they were so touched and they said i'm motivated too i also want to uh, you know compete one day mm -hmm. and i said wow you know if i had someone like that when i was going through something mm -hmm. my world would have been completely different mm -hmm. so it's so nice to, that's the biggest reward is think of who's in your audience who is going to be touched by it mm -hmm. you know and the same thing happened for the semifinals mm -hmm. um someone told me i held this lady's hand as she cried while I gave my semifinal speech because I was talking about my sight loss mm. and that really, really, really 
it touched me because I said, well, if it helped her, I've done, mm -hmm. I've, done I've, I've accomplished my mission. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so beautiful. That's yes. <laughs> but you not only, you don't only move. That's the thing. Your message is so powerful. Cause as you said, you don't know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know what you're dealing with, for instance, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes people, they lose loved ones. They yeah. go through cancer. They yeah. got a, a diagnostic. It doesn't have to be losing your sight. Yeah. It could be, could be so many different things. And it's just a message of hope. Like, I love that so much. And you, you message, I'm telling you, I, I cry. Like I've seen your messages many, many times and I'm not the only one I, I'm thinking I'm naming Rebecca McMillan, Kathy Draper. Like I can go on and on and on with people who are just moved. You know, it's memorable. I will never forget your speeches, Maria. Like I will never, for me, like that's why I, I consider you a, a champion. You are a champion, you know, you could call it, third, I don't care, first place, third place. You know, your message just shifts shifted me mm. shifts audiences moves people and we will never forget your messages you understand so yes you're a champion i know you don't want to believe me when i say it but you are it's work in progress do you believe it me? really is i don't have to choke you i'm starting to believe <laughs> i'm starting to believe you <laughs> yes yeah. keep and speaking don't stop marianne thank you patty mm -hmm. that's don't such stop. a nice oh what a nice conversation i love it don't stop yeah and along the way you're going to meet amazing people that's yeah. another thing i had yes. the pleasure of meeting patty mm. and we became like this yes <laughs> by me you like your sister yeah um, yes i think everyone has a message in them mm -hmm. you have a message in you mm -hmm. you have it and the message like so what is it to the, i don't want to mess up the saying is you're the most qualified person to speak about you know your own mm. message and what you've gone through so use it, use it. If you have a message, you never know who can help. Mm. Speak it, no hesitate. Go for it. Yes. I think I'm going to do this again this year. You what should. do you think? Yes, I'll be doing it. We'll yeah. be doing it together. Let's do it together. Let's find another district. I don't want to compete against you. No way. I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to compete against the same people. They're very strong people in the district. Yeah. So, but you know what? Yeah. This year, I'll just do it for fun. Yes. That's what I'm going to do too. The thing is, we know what to do. Yeah, People exactly. tell us what to do, yeah, and then we yeah, just yeah. choose to think. You know deep down what to do. That's the thing we all yeah. know. And but the answer is within us. But sometimes that's that's the whole challenge about when you're competing. Mm -hmm. It tests mm -hmm. the best. Of, it gets mm -hmm. and tests the best of you. Mm -hmm. And it did at, at many points. It got the best of mm -hmm. me. I have to say because <laughs> under pressure, as you can see, yes. <laughs> under pressure when you're stressed. Uh, you react differently and mm -hmm. you surprise yourself sometimes. Yeah, like, Whoa. So, yeah. And <laughs> Less of me, more of the Lord. <laughs> no, exactly. Less of me, more of the Lord. You need to put it, you need to trust the process, trust the journey, uh, put it in God's hands or whoever you believe in. Mm -hmm. Just let it, let it be. And I listened to that song on repeat so many times. Mm -hmm. Let it be, mm -hmm. you know, let things be mm -hmm. because they will. Things will happen no matter what. Yes. Yeah. Marianne. If you had one last thing to say, what would it be? No matter what you think might limit you, whether it's a physical limitation or not, no matter what limitation you might have, don't let that stop you from sharing your message with the world. Mm. And on that, I would say be unstoppable. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maria, for coming on the show again. Thank you for having me. <laughs> but ne so next week we'll come back again and we could uh, really what happened <laughs> with us. It's been such a had such a good time. Uh, did you have a good time? I had an amazing time. Good. I'm still having fun. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> My dear friend, thank you for watching. I hope you have been as inspired by Mariam's presence today as I was. And I will leave you with this. The power of your voice can change the world. Find it and use it. See you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>